Hey everyone, today we're going to a pretty cool place. If you guys remember that abandoned truck in the woods that I cleared out maybe three years ago now, that truck, originally somebody was gonna buy it to bring it home and use as a shed, but as soon as they found out the cost for the moving crew, because it was gonna get put on a big truck, but first, because the tractor trailer couldn't get anywhere near that truck since it's in the woods all grown in, they were gonna need to drop off a piece of heavy machinery with another truck to move it out to the truck, and the cost of the entire move was gonna be $18,000. So the whole thing got canceled. It was way too much money, so now, that truck, instead of it being scrapped and thrown away by whoever might buy that land, I found out that land was selling for extremely cheap, so I went ahead and bought it, and now I have a wood stove with me in the back of the vehicle and some piping. I'm going to put a tiny little wood stove in that thing. It's one that I got on eBay. It was only 300 bucks on sale from 500 bucks. I thought I would do that because an actual wood-burning stove, if I went to a store, would probably cost me well over a thousand dollars, even a tiny one for that little space. But this thing, you know, it's cheap, made in China, it didn't go together perfectly, some of the holes didn't even line up in the casting, but it'll work for what I'm using it for, I'm gonna have a CO detector in there. We're gonna hook that thing up, we're gonna throw a quick metal roof on that leaking truck, and we're gonna make it into a little camp, clean it up real nice in there. And anyone in the future who I know that can use it as a little hunting cabin or a little getaway. The only thing you can hear in the background is a little bit of traffic from the highway, but it's pretty secluded since the, tr the tractor trailer could not get in that tight little road to get in there. So we're going to have fun making that into a tiny little camp and we're going to do it on a budget. I'm going to do it as cheaply as possible. You're going to see what I mean by that, how exactly I plan on putting this roof on. All right, everyone, here we are at the truck in the woods. Got the roof on, got a wood stove in there ready to go. As soon as we fire up that wood stove, all that snow on the roof is gonna melt right off. Right now, it's not that bad out. It's about 32 degrees. We got a little bit of snow going on. Tonight's supposed to get down near eight, maybe a little colder, but we'll be fine. We got a wood stove in there and we also got bunch of logs and stuff out here I dumped so anytime I need more wood I'll come out and let me show you what we got inside but first I'm gonna show you a few clips of me installing the roof fixing the windshield and putting in the wood stove All right, everyone, so I decided I'm not using screws at all. I really don't think this is gonna blow off. Each piece of this is less than two feet wide and each piece has two big cinder blocks. There's not much overhang on the side for wind to catch. I don't think it's gonna be a problem at all. The top of this truck had a big dip in it that sometimes formed a big puddle and to get rid of that so water's not sitting on the roof, I just simply put this here. These are posts for a garden that got it up about an inch and a half so it's got a small crown so water doesn't pool here it goes right off alrighty it's time to get this windshield out I am just gonna give it a big kick got a lot more strength to it than I thought.
pretty easy cutting this thing in here. See? You got the damper now. Control the airflow. This was a bit challenging, actually getting this thing together, because you saw at first how the pipes, they come open, like the one right there. That should be good enough. Awesome. I'm probably just going to use this in a circle for like 10 minutes. Yeah, we do have to cut a little more out of there. It hides all the ugliness. You're never going to know how I made this hole. This is going to go pretty well. So I started off with these tiny little clamps right here because that's all they had in the wood stove aisle, right? These screws here were too small. Look at the head of that one, see? It's not actually in. I must have broken off a dozen screws trying to get them through this really thick metal. So I went back to the store, got these heavier duty brackets. This was straight and I bent it to use it as this. And I got bigger sheet metal screws that went through the truck with no problem at all. All right, everyone, here we are on the other side of the truck. Check out this windshield. I think that looks really cool. This truck is just going to keep growing in. There's so many little trees around it. It's what I want. I want it to be like tight growth around this truck. Look at that. All the snow must have just slid off it. All right, everybody. It's time to give you a little tour of the inside of this truck and some of the things I did to it. If you remember, this thing was so nasty the first time I ever came out here three years ago. Jam-packed, full of people's stuff, using it as a storage unit. Full of mice, I ripped out the ceiling, removed the insulation, gave it a deep cleaning. You would never know what was in there. It smells like nothing now. And look at this, I thought this was funny, so I put a flower pot as the back wheel. Even made sure to chalk the wheel. So here's the stove pipe we installed earlier in the week. Whole truck is metal. That was kind of hard to drill through. This very, very thick metal on the truck. I just recently replaced the chimney cap because the other one was too restrictive for the stove during my first test run. At some point, I want to use this as those old-fashioned sinks like they used to use hundreds of years ago. You got to go to the stream or the well, fill it up, do your dishes, and you pull the drain. It goes through the wall of the house. Here's an old cooler. This is pretty cool. This actually came with the truck with all the stuff I cleared out of it. And in here, here's breakfast. Got some eggs and bacon. Also some bananas. And for dinner, I'll show you that later. What we're going to cook up for dinner in here. So here we come. Originally, this was a rotted piece of plywood I replaced. So this is like the little kitchen area where I would eventually try to put a little makeshift sink in here get the light on show you around right here I got some cast iron cookware I'm gonna use this pot to make some coffee in here got some silverware there's my instant coffee and creamer got some jugs of water this stuff would freeze if I didn't just I'm gonna come in here and fire up the stove in just a couple brief minutes Got some paper towels, disposable plates, just throw them into the fire. There's the old cap that was all restrictive and whatnot. Got some soap so I can go do dishes. I'll show you. There is a stream maybe about 200 feet away from me. It's going to be cold water, but we can still use that for 
cleaning out that pan and the silverware. You're not supposed to use soap to wash these kind of pans, so I'll just wipe them off with a wet paper towel. Here's some logs I'm going to be splitting in here. Look at this. Even got a nice spider web from the spider friends right here attached to the blinker stock. Got my headlamp in case I got to go outside at night. Got my garbage can here. And right behind me, we got the thermometer. It's around 32 degrees in here. Right here for a precaution, I got my CO2 detector. I just bought it, got new batteries. Give that a quick test. Beep, 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 beep. I had to do it one more time. So down here, this is all stuff that came with the truck, but it will become useful for me someday. Nice propane burner, got a big pot, two full cans of propane. That could also be used for heating in here. Bunch of various other things here. Got a microwave. There is no way to get power out here unless I got solar panels or a generator. Right here, I got a bunch of kindling to start the fire, a bunch of cardboard. Right here, a bunch of wood I'm gonna throw in here as kindling to get the fire going. I'm gonna burn all this scrap or maybe save it for kindling for future fires. That all was in here. Got the saw to cut that up. Made a nice little table in here. Found this chair at the landfill. Got my toothbrush and other stuff. Got my camera lights. I got my bed right here. It's not that bad. It's a nice little like hospital cot. That's going to be comfortable, especially when we get the temperature in here up to like 80 degrees. Got my broom so I can sweep up any mess I make. With my feet, see I'm tracking in snow. Floor is going to get wet, but it'll dry from the heat. I got my log splitter here. I'll show you how I use that with those logs. And anytime I need them throughout the night, I got a log pile right outside. Going to fire up this cool little wood stove. This thing was 300 bucks on eBay. You get what you pay for. You see, the casting wasn't perfect. That's why it's bent a little bit. The uh, bolt holes didn't line up, so this bolt can't go in. But I gave it a test run. It doesn't leak smoke. You're going to see a little bit of smoking because you have to wear off the external seasoning, which is basically oil painted on it the first time you use it. I didn't use it a lot the first time, so there might be a little bit of smoke. We'll just leave the door cracked for the time being. But I think this is a pretty cool setup. Got the damper set up here. Goes right through the wall. Look at all these nice mirrors. These were in the truck when I got it. Cleaned them up with Windex, and they look kind of nice. So we're going to have a good night. First thing I'm going to do is fire up the old stove, and then cook some dinner, and hopefully before it gets dark, I'm going to go ahead and show you the little water that's over there a couple hundred feet. Do some dishes, brush my teeth. But I think I got this place pretty cleaned up. I, lo I love this. It looks like a nice little rustic kitchen of a truck. I think it's really cool. All righty. enough everyone that will last us a good hour at least that'll get us nice and hot and ready so all right everyone we have the stove only used it once briefly this is to open the door in case it's too hot so we're going to start off putting some cardboard and other kindling in here get this thing going nice and hot Stuffing in a bunch of cardboard in the front, deep back in there, got a bunch of good kindling here, yep, throw a lot of good kindling on top of that, 
That'll get us going nice and hot. And a few of those pieces of wood I just split. Get those in there. That's enough for now. The gauge up there is starting to move. We're starting to get some heat. As soon as it gets into the white area, that's operating temperature, and it shouldn't be doing this smoking into the room anymore. But most of the time, I'm going to be able to keep it shut unless I'm loading it. Then absolutely nothing is going to come into the room going up the pipe. But we need as much air getting in there as possible while we're heating it up. All right, I got this thing going really good. Now this wood stove, it has like some kind of heat shield in there. I'm thinking for these don't, you know, overheat. But I made a hole in it and it solved the whole problem of smoke coming into the room. See what I mean? See where the, the flame's going up through a little hole? There's this fire retardant panel in there and I just punched a hole through it. It solved the entire smoke coming into the room problem, and it started breathing extremely well. I needed to do it. I've been wanting to do that ever since this thing made smoke come in here during my test run. And now, since I poked a little hole, it's running perfectly. It's running much better. And we're almost to operating temp. And I'm glad I just made that little modification by making a hole directly into the pipe. Because now I can leave it open. I like that. It gives me light, something nice to look at. Without the smoke filling the room, this smoke will quickly go out the door. Alright, here we are outside. The chimney is working really good. Look at all that smoke. And it's snowing again! Isn't that awesome? I think this is awesome. It's snowing again. Yep. We're supposed to get a few more inches tonight. This is working well. It'll be warm inside in no time. good. That's enough firewood to cook dinner and probably heat this place until it's bedtime and then I'll split a bunch more. All right everyone, this log splitter works really good for this. That thing sure beats chopping with an axe. And this wood stove is doing really good too. Look at that, we're in good operating temp. It's staying within there for a while. Nice hot stove pipe. 
the burners very hot ready to cook on anytime i'm willing to this isn't even that hot yet open it up doing good in there barely any smoke coming into the room since i made that modification nothing's overheating but if this gauge started getting over here towards too hot that's what the damper is for if you see a little bit of smoke right here i go ahead and take a whiff that's not leaking smoke if you can see that it's still burning off it's seasoning on the stove because this is a fairly new stove and this is going to be the first actual time running it for a while so that's expected the smoke in here for the most part is cleared up i'm going to leave the door open until it gets dark i like having a nice breeze it's already warm enough in here that i'm about to take my jacket off how warm are we we're next to an open door but as you can see, still, it went up. Look at this. We're about 48 degrees already. When we started, we were at about freezing. So the actual temperature back in the room, I wouldn't be surprised if it's up near 60, even hotter. As soon as I shut the door, this place will easily bake up to like 90 degrees. So for the night, there's a good chance I might just leave the door cracked. I'm definitely going to turn the damper way down so a really nice slow burn throughout the night. Then I don't even have to get out of bed and put anything in. I think this truck looks really cool like this with a smokestack coming out of it. This looks really cool to me. Warm enough in here that, see the snow I tracked in? It's all melting. This is all going to start drying up. It's becoming cozy in here now. All right, everyone, it's nice and warm now inside the truck. The stove is fully heated up, good operating temperature. Let's go ahead and throw one more log in there. Make sure it stays nice and hot. We're gonna start making dinner. All right, now that we got the stove all heated up, it's time to go outside and get the stuff we have out in the cooler. Gonna make a good dinner tonight. All right, it's getting nice and warm in here. Nothing's smoking anymore. Let's shut the door. Take off my jacket. And there's even hooks that were already in here, right by the door. holder first thing I got here is my heavy pan gonna start off by putting butter in it so nothing sticks and we're gonna preheat this on the stove all right everyone I'm gonna start off by placing my pan onto the stove and now I'm gonna take a fairly big chunk of butter and let it melt in there because I'm gonna be cooking tonight some fish salmon and some mushrooms in here all fresh just bought them today from the store. <clears throat> Throw half a stick in there so I have a good amount to move around, cook the food with. Put that right there. Alrighty, time to throw a little more wood into the fire. Now we can start cooking.
still waiting for this thing to produce even more heat. I'm waiting right now for these pans to get up to temp. The stove is very hot, but that pan is thick. It's going to take like 10 minutes to get hot enough where I want it. You can see we got a nice hot fire going in the firebox. We got the room now to 66 degrees and it's still climbing. All right, everyone, we are finally hot enough to start cooking some food. Get all that butter moving around in there. All right, here we got some fish. That was scary. Go ahead and let that cook for a while. Got some garlic. Now you guys know I'm definitely not a vampire. Throwing in a bunch of garlic. And we got some mushrooms. I'm gonna put as many as I can fit in there. Keep moving them around. Yeah, that'll cook up nice. I'm just gonna stir this around for a while. That's why I put a lot of butter in there. A little sprinkle of oregano. Putting some pepper on it. As you can see everyone, it's getting toasty in here. I'm probably going to leave the door cracked until after dinner. I just chopped some firewood to pass the time. My water's boiling, that's going to be my coffee. And right here, my meal's almost done. I just got to stir it a couple more times. Give it a little longer. That came out way better than I thought it would. And I put the foil over it, you know, to keep heat in there so it could cook really well. I know, I probably should have used that pot to cook all this. Definitely next time. Later on tonight, if I want a snack in the middle of the night, I got a potato, I'm going to wrap it in aluminum foil, throw it inside the... right into the fire. Give it like an hour, it'll come out nicely cooked. Alright everyone, so as far as the coffee, I got this instant coffee here, it comes from the dollar store. And it's pretty good. Just pour some in. You can even do it with cold water. Throw some instant coffee in there. And this makes a lot. Go ahead, throw in some of the creamer. I'm going to save the other half of the creamer for the morning. So I can have some morning coffee. And as you guys can tell, that is a lot of coffee. This is like four, maybe six cups worth. I'm gonna slowly sip on this pot throughout the night. And that's instant coffee, so. Mmm, good too. I'm gonna take this off, let it cool down a little bit, and I'll sip it right out of the pot. Just grab the pot holder so I can go put this on my table without it burning it. All right, let's see how the food is coming out. That looks way better than I expected. The mushrooms are already fully cooked. The garlic. The garlic is just about cooked too. 
The salmon looks really good. I'm pretty sure that's already cooked through. Looks very tasty. I see all the butter I put on it earlier. The pepper, oregano. Let's go ahead and cut into the thickest part. Oh yeah, that's nice. That's cooked all the way through. I think this is done for me. Yep. All right, everyone, let's bring this over to the table. All right, here we are over at the dinner table. Brought the pan over. Just gonna eat it right out of the pan. This is so tender, I don't even need a knife. I can just, with the fork, right into it. Got some nice hot coffee with dinner. Right here I got my nice salmon. Looks really nice, yummy. Mushrooms, bunch of cloves of garlic in there. While I'm waiting for dinner to cool down for a few minutes, I gotta make it cool down in here. Try shutting the damper to half. Not gonna throw anything else in here. It's already way too hot in here. Yeah, it's 78 degrees as you can see. Gonna open this door a bit more. The door always gets stuck because there's ice in the track. Take a look at the chimney. That thing is burning so clean. There's almost zero smoke coming out. Yeah, the first stuff you saw me chopping in the beginning of the video was pine. This stuff here is aspen. Not the best kind of stuff. It's not hardwoods, but it's perfect for camping. I'm going to have to clean the floor because you see those logs were all snow covered, so it's very wet. As soon as the heat in here dries all this, I'll give it a good sweep. And then I'm going to chop some more firewood so I can relax in here all night. And then I'm going to try to get some sleep. All right, sitting down to a nice dinner. First thing I'm going to try is the fish. See how good this is. I absolutely love eating fish. Give those mushrooms a try. They look nice and cooked. Let's try a garlic clove. I actually like it a little undercooked. A lot of times when it's soggy, it's kind of gross. I like it when it's still a little bit firm. Love garlic. All right, this coffee, it's a little bit too hot to touch the bottom for long. So that means it's going to be perfect to drink. That's really good. This will be gone in no time. I'm already getting pretty full, but I'm definitely going to eat it all. Then I got to clean this pan out really good. Nothing can get in this thing except for a mouse, but definitely the coyotes and raccoons are going to smell this. I put trail cameras around here. Lots of coyotes and there's raccoons. Last night when I came up here the first time to install the actual stove, there was coyotes howling like crazy. They don't want anything to do with you, but the food will definitely attract them. Like, I heard a whole bunch of howling. There must have been a whole pack of them wandering around in the woods, and I just screamed. I went, Rawr! And you could hear them. They were still making all their noises, but they were quickly moving away.
I am stuffed. That was a little bit too much food. Should have probably only had one of the pieces of fish. Mmm. Good coffee. Let's put that back on the stove. Let that heat up a little more. We're going to go to the stream I talked about to do some dishes before it gets too dark out. Alrighty. It's about 75 degrees in here. Not bad at all. Let's go outside. That track is really annoying on this door. I don't even know if it is ice. Something, something causes it to not want to open all the time. All right, everyone, we're leaving the truck. Let me show you where the stream is. Just got to walk through the bushes a little bit. And there's a kind of a trail here. Yeah, this is a nice trail. There's a stream over here, just a couple hundred feet away from the truck. It's still snowing out, very nice. Temperature hasn't gone down that much. Right now it's about 25 out, but as soon as the sky clears up, because it's not going to snow all night, that will allow for maximum radiational cooling, where everything just goes off into space. And we should be down in the single digits by the morning. All right, we're still walking in this really low spot of the woods. There's a stream. I think I see it. Here we are. Nice trickling stream. Perfect to do some dishes. Yep. All right, got Don dish soap and a paper towel just to rinse off the pan. People always wonder why I wear boots everywhere. They're great in the snow, and they are great because I can do this. Not a worry. You know, when it's cold out, I really don't mind touching the water, but it is such a pain in the butt to get grease off stuff because the cold is keeping it nice and hard. The same with the dish soap. Without heat or warm water, it's really hard to get off your hands. You gotta scrub forever just to get the soap off. So I'm simply just gonna go back and use a dry paper towel. That's basically what you're supposed to do with this kind of cookware because soap will ruin the oily sheen on it the seasoning you're not supposed to use soap on cast iron beautiful trickling stream you know i followed this up once it ends in just a couple hundred yards this is all groundwater coming out of the hill i imagine it's probably a temporary stream that dries up in the summer All right, everyone, we're back, and the coffee is nice and hot now. I'm going to go take that off, and the pan I'm going to put back on. That was stupid of me to even try to get that grease off with a cold, wet paper towel. I'm just going to use a dry paper towel as soon as that heats back up. That grease is solid. It needs to be liquefied to be able to get it off. Wow, we burned through a lot of wood fast. Gotta throw a bigger piece in there that'll last a while. That piece will be in there for a long time, a couple hours. The stove is burning nice, not overheating. This is going perfectly. All right, this thing heated up enough. This is what I should have done all along. Some people think cast iron cookware is gross because literally you're supposed to cook in it with grease and then when you're done, you're supposed to wipe it out like this, not use any soap. 
and that butter literally just re-seasoned the pan by itself. All right, everyone, so you see what I'm cleaning up here? A lot of water, bark coming off all those trees. Because my log pile is covered in snow, so this is what to expect. I just chopped more than enough for the overnight and tomorrow, so I don't have to do this again. I'm going to have to mop this again at some point. <laughs> That's all right. All right, cleaning up the floor. You see, I got a good pile of wood. That'll last all night. I don't have a dustpan. Opened up the door. Don't have a dustpan. Just throw it right outside as much as I can. As much as I can get. Take this. Right out the door. I still got the coffee brewing. Still not that hot because I don't have the stove running very hot right now. It's burning really well in there. So, I have no regrets on making that hole up there through that heat shield. I wanted it to be able to have a nice updraft. Ever since I did that, no more smoke is coming into the truck. Everything is going up perfectly. And you see how the fire is going up there? If the pipe gets too hot, I just turn down the damper all day. It has not exceeded 400. Gets too hot, just turn that a little bit, and the flame going up there has reduced. Close it even more, and now you get smoke coming into the room. All right, everyone, so I got a big potato right here. Gonna go ahead and poke a bunch of really small holes in it on both sides. Looks like I'm just about out of foil. I'm gonna throw it in there anyways, like this, and I'm definitely gonna be able to eat the middle of it. The outside will be burnt, but I'll cut that off. I'm gonna simply just throw it in the end here where it's not as hot. All right, so here's the potato. I don't have enough foil actually to wrap it, unfortunately. But I'll be able to eat some of it. It'll burn the outside. I'll just cut that off when it's done. Put it right here, right in the end of the stove where it's not as hot. Add a piece of wood. Closed it. And now we wait for like an hour. Hear that noise? That's water dripping on the windshield. At first I thought it was fluctuations in temperature with the stove.
Alrighty, I just cut up all that wood. That's going to be used as kindling for future fires. That was really easy to cut up. And now let's look inside the stove. There's my baked potato. I think that's going to be perfect. I'm just going to have to get the burnt off the edges. Fire's burning really nicely. Very warm in here. And I realized if I'm sitting over there on the bed, especially if I shut the light off, if there's good flames in here, it reflects through all the mirrors. It looks really cool. Very relaxing in here. Nice and warm. Keeping a good temperature. This place makes some really eerie noises. Outside we're down to 15 degrees and inside here it's nearly 80 degrees. As a result of that drastic temperature change, these metal walls, they're making eerie creaking sounds. It, it makes the sounds like there's a massive amount of pressure or I'm like down inside a ship and you hear all that loud creaking sounds like those like in the movies when a ship is slowly sinking it makes all these weird eerie metal creaking sounds kind of cool laying in bed here right next to the emergency exit I covered up the windows so I don't get woken up in the morning when the sun comes up I think it's nice and peaceful in here very warm, freezing cold wall that I have my head up against. It's now around 7 p.m. and it's peaceful in here. Some people may not like this little place, but I think it's perfect. I love the metal walls, the metal ceiling, the metal floor, the corrugated metal down at the windshield. It all looks industrial, every part of this, and that's what I like about it. Even my little counter space right there, made out of those old beer kegs on top of the wheel well. It's all pretty rustic. Got the nice wooden shelves over here. Got the nice area up front where I made into like a little kitchen area. Right here. Old steering wheel I'm using as a towel holder. Nice shelves on the dashboard. And I'm thinking what I can do here as far as, you know, on a cold night like this, I could probably lift up this engine compartment and put stuff in there. Like a halfway point from being really cold. Before I go to bed, I'm going to bring the cooler in here so my stuff doesn't freeze. I'm going to put a bunch of snow in the cooler and just bring it right inside the door and everything should be good for the morning. There's a lot of weird stuff in this truck too. Look in the glove box. There's a bunch of lights from the truck, a deadbolt, mirrors, speakers, that kind of stuff. Every part of this truck is made out of really nice aluminum, except the stairs have a whole couple holes rusted through it. That's why I threw the cinder blocks in there. You see I use spray foam to patch up every little hole. I don't think mice can get in right now at the moment probably through there. I forgot that one. I'm slowly going to find all the holes. This made a huge difference from that. This was an old rotted piece of plywood at first. This door does not open for some reason. I think it's just locked and I do have the keys to the truck somewhere. They're here somewhere. Do you see them anywhere? Not these. I don't know what those go to. Those were hanging here all along somewhere in here I got the keys I just misplaced them for the moment anyways the ignition key was broken off inside it and I did find the actual key for the door oh I'm stupid it's in the door on the outside it does not work even on this door it will not lock it and it also will not unlock that one over there either Want to take a look at the odometer on the truck? It 
says that we still got half a tank of fuel. That is not true at all. There's no fuel tank on this truck. It's been removed. There's no engine, no transmission, just the shell of a truck. This is my garbage. There's a little microwave up here that came with the place. Bunch of containers of deck stain. If I can't think of a project for those, I'm going to get rid of them because they're getting kind of rusty and they might start leaking. Someone's hubcaps. This is for like a turkey. These are things I salvage that I might be able to find a use for or give to someone. These I thought would be really good for like potted plants. These big trays. Christmas tree stand. Electric fence insulators. This came with it, not the propane. I put the two propane cylinders in here. I used this space in here for making maple syrup last year. Worked out good. I'm thinking I can actually use this for making maple syrup in the spring. What do you guys think? I can literally put this giant pot, or if you saw outside, there's a 10-gallon pot. I could put it right on top of both of those burners in here. You're not supposed to do maple syrup in the house because it leaves a nasty residue. I did it in here. I didn't notice, notice really anything. I really don't care in here either. Hear that really eerie creaking I mentioned? That might be water rapidly dripping onto the windshield. Let's go outside and see. door always gets stuck halfway. What am I hearing? Yeah, it is water dripping, see? Water rapidly dripping. I do hear a lot of eerie creaks that keep happening with the roof. I can't believe it. It's cold enough that it's not melting the snow. It's not even dripping. And I've been in here for Many hours keeping it warm. I think it's because there's a gap between the truck and the roof I put on, and wind is getting in there preventing it from rusting. I mean melting. That's a good... Actually, that's a really good thing. Don't really have to worry about ice dams when it's super duper cold. Pipe is hot. Yep, not that hot, but it is hot. At first, I was concerned that maybe around here, the paint might fall off from the heat. That is no longer a concern at all. This thing's been at operating temperature for six hours. It's running very well. See, for breakfast, all I got is eggs and bacon. I don't even need to stuff that with snow. I'm just going to shove it in the door. Hear that really eerie noise? Kind of creepy, right? It's not creaking, actually. There are certain creaks, but I realize that's just the water dripping on the windshield from the roof. All right, everyone. Now that it's becoming a little later into the night, the breeze has stopped. And as a result, I think the heat is now actually getting up to the roof because there is a consistent noise of dripping water on the sides especially on the windshield is most noticeable dripping off the roof onto that metal do you hear that i kind of like it it's relaxing maintaining a good temperature in here 72 degrees i haven't put any wood in here in nearly an hour so it's probably due for some. Still keeping a good temp. But it needs a little more. This isn't even hot. We're cooling down. So, after about an hour, my potatoes should be ready. Look at that. It kind of shriveled up in there and the foil fell right off. But that's alright. Because that potato in there, I'm going to cut it open and it should be fine. Just eat around all that char. All right, time to get the potato out. What do you think? I, I think I personally overcooked it, but maybe I'll get a couple bites out of that. I'm hoping. That's all right. I got other food. Time to throw some more stuff into the stove.
That'll heat back up nice and fast. Yep, and I'm just gonna leave the door open, get it going even faster. Let's cut this open. I think I ruined it. I think I waited too long. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That was cooked a long time ago. Well, no, no. There's actually some good potato in there. Yeah, not the best looking thing, but still, we got something. Oh yeah, we definitely got some good potatoes still left in that. Not completely ruined. There's literally only like a good bite in the middle of it. Fire's starting to catch up again. Yeah, that does have a horrible smoky aftertaste. Well, that's because I ran out of foil. It would have been fine in there for that one hour if I had properly wrapped it and all. I'm just gonna throw that in I'm just gonna throw that out into the woods. Something will pick out the middle of that. Alrighty everyone. I'm gonna sit down in bed for a little bit and I'm gonna probably go ahead and post a video. I do have a signal out here after all and read comments for like two hours, then I'm gonna try getting to bed. All right, I really let this thing heat up in here a lot. Now that I'm just sitting around not doing anything, I got a little chilly. We got a nice consistent 78 degrees in here now. I'm just leaving this thing open because the fire burns hotter. I know it's not being as efficient, but it's heating it up really good for me. And the pipe's not overheating despite you seeing a little bit of flame going up through that crack. I know you can see that on the camera. Nothing's overheating, but because I'm making it so warm, you hear dripping like crazy off the roof. I'm going to bring you out there in a minute to show you. It's been consistently lightly snowing. We probably picked up two inches since we've been in here, but the roof is drastically melting. By morning, I bet there'll be no snow. Got a nice little fire going in here. I just watched a video about near the Cascade Mountains. The DOT is putting a whole bunch of animal overpasses so they can get across the road. That just came up into my feed. I also posted my own video called Buildings Crumbling Into the Sea. That's when I visited Oregon. I just posted that. Got that edited up recently. This thing's hot enough to cook on right now. I want to bring you outside and show you everything dripping off the roof. All right, here we go. That door always gets jammed. All right, so we're gonna come up into the front of the truck. This is what I did earlier. It says right here, bear eggsing. This is where I just got up. I'm just gonna step up onto the hood of the truck. Ooh. And this is the noise you hear inside the truck from the roof onto the windshield. Consistent dripping right here on this lip. All right, now if you look on top of the truck, there's hardly an inch up here. It's melting fast, the heat we're producing. And this weird corner here obviously has a lot of heat loss. It completely melted in this above the driver's seat for some reason. Look at this. That would scare me in the middle of the night if that fell off. Take a look at that. There's our smokestack. Looks really beautiful. The trees, it's snowing. 
Look at this gross crud coming out of the pipe. That is what we call creosote, the stuff that builds up inside chimneys coming out of the little cracks. So peaceful with the nice snow. And before I forget, I better bring this into the truck. Despite it being so warm in here, right here, the entryway, that snow on the floor, on those stairs right here, it's not melting. So I'm just going to leave this here. Those eggs will be fine. Eggs don't even have to be refrigerated most of the time. And the bacon will be fine. We'll cook that up in the morning. I'm learning that it's kind of hard to keep a consistent temperature. I had it up to 85, now we're dropping. Very leaky truck. Without the fire, temperatures would plunge in here very quickly. Tons of dripping water sounds. And one of the reasons, I think, for the inconsistency of heat is the pine burns really good, but very fast. The aspen part of the pile is complete junk to burn. So, I think I'm going to go and find a maple log. I know I got a few, and that'll be good for the overnight hours too, because that stuff, it takes a while to burn. And it burns very efficiently. Aspen is kind of garbage. I thought today I'd be able to get rid of a bunch of it. But that's better left for a campfire. Pine is alright though. In the background I have a good signal in the area so I'm just catching up reading some comments on a video I just posted. I am starting to absolutely love this place. The wood stove is doing a great job keeping it warm. For the most part, it's been between 70 and 80 the whole time, and that's really nice. I just brushed my teeth, went outside to clean off my toothbrush, washed my hands, that kind of stuff. Went to the bathroom in the woods. Came back in here, it's really nice. The entire roof is dripping like crazy. It feels really nice in here. I love the heat coming off this thing. This is a really nice, relaxing place. I think I'm going to start using this place to do video editing. Nice and quiet and peaceful. I really like it. I just sat over there for like two hours. Posted a video. Read a lot of comments. Watched a couple of recommended videos. Pretty interesting. The last video in my recommendation, I don't know why, but it was a bunch of chimpanzees figuring out that they could lean a tree against the fence and get out of the zoo enclosure. We're operating nice and hot. All right, everyone, it's nearly one in the morning and I am exhausted. I'm about to go to sleep now. Gonna replace these power banks with some fresh ones to run the light and camera throughout the night. This thing's still running nice and hot. I just threw some more wood in there. Once that gets going, I'm gonna put these big pieces of maple in there. And that should keep this thing warm until I wake up in the morning. Hopefully, I'm going to shut the door and hopefully those keep it fairly warm in here throughout the night. I'll just leave the candles going. It's not like we can burn this building down. And then I'm about to go to bed. You just saw me in that time lapse. I actually was very productive. I spent the past four hours in here caught up on editing some recent videos. All right, I'm going to go outside one last time. I got a I have two power banks charging in my vehicle. I have to grab and I'm going to put these in there 
to start charging overnight. Those, no, those will not kill the vehicle battery. At least they shouldn't. I've done this before. Listen to this. We're in the middle of the woods, but yet a helicopter keeps circling over me. That sounds so close, right? They must see the smoke coming out of an abandoned truck, and they think I'm like some criminal who just escaped, probably sleeping in here since there's nothing else really around here. <laughs> All right, everyone, it's morning. It's now 10 o'clock, and I did not have that great of a night of sleep. It's not because it was cold. It was really nice in here. It's I wish I had earplugs. There was a very inconsistent sound of dripping water in that back corner falling off the roof. Very loud and annoying. Uh, we picked up even more snow overnight. A couple more inches. We'll see how bad it is in a little while. Gonna now go and start some breakfast. Bacon and eggs. Oh, this is still plenty cold down inside the stairwell. So this place maintained a good between 65 and 80 degrees, depending what part of the night it was. When I threw those giant maple logs I brought in there, this thing really got going. It loves good wood. This place got over 90 at that time. And it completely dried the floor. Now I don't even need to have shoes on in here. So this wood is obviously not that great. I'm going to burn through all of this before I leave today. And... It just shows this stuff goes through there pretty fast, doesn't generate much heat. But when I put quality maple in there, this thing really got cooking. It got way up into the end of that range. This place really got cooking. I shut the door. It was still really hot, even with that damper almost shut. All right, everyone, I'm going to begin breakfast by starting these pans here to start preheating. One of them will be for eggs, and I have a whole pound of bacon I gotta cook, or it's gonna go bad. I'm just gonna put it in this pot, put the cover on, and just keep stirring it around, and when I'm done, I'll dry off the grease with some paper towels. All right, everyone, we're starting to get warm. Not that warm, but I'm gonna throw some butter in. We don't need a lot of butter in these pans, just enough so the eggs don't get stuck when I crack them and put them in there. And I don't think we need butter in there. That's going to be bacon. There's going to be so much grease once I put that in there. All right, and here we got some bacon. I couldn't believe how cheap it was. Meat is usually expensive lately. It was only $4 for the pound. There we go. Here we are, back with the cover, and I'll stir that occasionally. That'll cook up nicely. I'm not going to put the egg in yet because the egg is going to cook much faster. Right now, I'm purposely burning this thing as hot as I can 
just so we can cook some food on it. Right now I'm preparing for the food. I got a plate ready and I'm gonna take some paper towels. All right, and this is how we're gonna get all the grease off the bacon so we're not as unhealthy. Here's a plate for my raw eggshells and here's a plate for my eggs. Next time I'm probably gonna have to use the pot holders. It's getting pretty hot. Bacon is finally starting to cook. Now that it's starting, it'll go pretty quickly. Let's get the eggs ready. All right, here we go with some eggs. One. Two. I'm probably gonna scramble them. Wiping that raw egg juice off my fingers. All right, it's boiling in here now. I'm gonna close the door on the stove and I've already shut the damper a bit because we're getting into the too hot zone on the gauge. So this will quickly cool back down. Let's see all the bacon's doing. I can still touch that. We're starting to cook a little bit. I might have put the eggs on a little too soon. All right, everyone, the eggs are done. The bacon, not quite yet for me. It's technically safe to eat, but I want it to get a little crispy. Here's the egg. That's four eggs. And this is actually a good thing because I'll eat more if I space it apart. I'll get hungry again by the time the bacon's ready for me in like 20 minutes. Because I'm going to let that slow cook for a while. And this I'll go clean off afterwards. Should do it as, done as, as soon as I'm done eating because that's just going to get tougher to clean if I let it cool down. But it is time for eggs now. I'm gonna add some pepper onto that. Give it a try. Good. They're very good because they were slow cooked over a while. All right, everyone, I'm sure you saw me make some coffee, and you see here I'm trying to clean the eggs out of that pan. It's being a little stubborn, but it's going to work. I just got to get it to a boil. The bacon looks like it's just about done. Let's get the spatula, and we're going to get that onto a plate. You know, it is so hot in here from doing this cooking that I have to keep the door wide open. Here we are. Now let me move the pan I'm cleaning to the hotter burner, which is in the back. Now let's see about getting this bacon out, getting it out of that grease onto the paper towel. And while it's still hot, 
I better clean this pan. This should be a lot easier because it's so greasy. There we are. Whole pound of bacon cooked. Nice and crispy. Give that a few minutes to dry off, cool down, and then I'll get eating. I'm gonna go ahead and pour the grease here onto this plate, and that will be quick to solidify. And then we can throw it outside and something will eat it. It's winter time. Animals are looking to fatten up. Came out really good, even though it took an hour. Nice and crispy. All right, all gone. I think now I'm going to go for a walk in the woods. I'm getting a little bored in here. Then I'm going to come back and clean. Then I'm going to brush my teeth, and then we're going to get on the road out of here. It's a good thing I'm not doing this in the summertime. This would attract every bear in the area. But bears typically go into hibernation when the temperature is below 40 or so. Don't have to worry about them. Last night, as soon as I got into bed, the blanket, I was like, why can't I pull it over myself? There's condensation all over the walls, right? The blanket slipped down there, and it froze to the wall. I had to rip it off. And also, you probably saw me throughout the nighttime time lapse. I got up multiple times to throw fuel in this thing. And also, one time the door just swung open, it scared me a lot. I guess I didn't latch it good enough. One candle still burning. This light is awesome. It's only running on 24%, but this was on all night and it's still got 64% battery left. Very efficient. I barely use that thing because it's a little awkward. I go with these lights here. I always leave the links to those in my video description. This one here has a really long life if you have it like 60 or something. On a hundred, it'll burn through a battery in a half hour. But if you turn it way down like this, this is how I recorded last night in single digit mode like that. It'll run for like six hours. With a power bank in it, it'll run for a couple days. Love those lights. Coffee's just about warmed up. I'm going to drink the rest of that. We're going to go on a little walk. I'm going to come back and clean this up. I'm definitely going to camp in here again sometime, probably during a giant snowstorm or when it's extremely cold. Last night only got down to negative 7 or so, at least that's what it says online, I didn't personally look. Right now it's already back up to 28, that's warmer than yesterday. So things are probably just going to melt now from the sun. Next time I camp in here, especially when it's really cold, to help with drafts, I want to come in here with a caulking gun. See all these little holes, you see light poking through. All those need to be plugged, and up front, the crack wasn't big enough to use spray foam. Up here is open air. I need to go on the outside of the top of the windshield and put a bead of caulk over that. And there's also a couple more holes, you see. Once we get all those little holes sealed up, it'll be a lot better in here. So I've been out here on a walk for about 20 minutes so far, just exploring. You see, this was logged at one point. This is an old logging road. A lot of deer tracks out here. I'm just walking along this overgrown logging road. Looks like this was another road. We only picked up about two inches of snow last night. Now I don't have to go this way, but I'm gonna take the same road I came in here with. It's a very rugged mountain road and there's gonna be pretty deep snow there. So we'll have some fun driving in that tonight. That area picked up eight inches last night. We only got two here. It is so beautiful out here with all the fresh snow. I just had to go for a walk.
Everything about today is so beautiful and pretty. All right, the windshield's covered in like freezing rain. Let's try to defrost this. It's about to get dark soon. I'm gonna let this vehicle run for like 20 minutes. This is it's gonna take a while to get this ice off. All right, everyone. We are now on our way out of here. This road got really bad in the past day. We picked up another, I think four or five inches of snow, but it, they didn't plow it the first time so there's a ton of snow on this road hope I can make it down here safely doesn't seem that bad just gonna have to go really slow and carefully we only got about four miles left of this stopping is not a problem but you see that right there? My traction control does not like that. I gotta take off slowly because when I stopped, I dug little holes even deeper into the snow. Very, very bad road. All right, everyone, we finally got out of that road. I can't believe I didn't get stuck making it out of there. The snow was deep enough that I was actually, you know, pushing a little bit of it, definitely bottoming out in it. For the most part, I did not lose traction. I made it out of there. This road is plowed. It's a lot better. And I hope today's video was interesting, everyone. Thanks for watching and have a great day. All right, everyone. I hope today's video was interesting. Thanks for watching and have a great day.